and gear. Wait, what happened here? Hey, welcome to Tone Talk with Mark Uzanski and Dave Friedman. Am I loud? Yeah. Again? Yeah. <laughs> You're like... <laughs> uh, maybe you just laid into the mic or something. Maybe. I don't... There, it's fine now. Okay. All right. I won't scream. I'll just turn uh, you down. I screwed up the intro. Anyway, hope everybody's doing good. Um, it's Friday night. I'm a little tired. Long day. Long week at work. <clears throat> what about you? Man, this is normal. normal, normal, normal. Cheers. Having a cocktail right now on on air, yeah, along with too. everyone else, I assume. Yes, <clears throat> uh, definitely in need of. My buddy brought over some Coronas. We watched the uh, playoff game last week, he, and he left. He left most of the six pack. So I was like, "Oh, that's right. He still he left those here." When he right. Them. You know, it's funny. Uh, <clears throat> I was texting with uh, uh, P. Thorne and. Uh, he goes, you know, you know what we should do one day? We should do a show that any any time uh, someone gives a super chat, we have to take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, help us. That would be bad. That would be bad. Maybe between the, the three of us, we can rotate between the, you know, the, the drinks and the. Oh, and no. The, <laughs> no 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 we don't have to do it mm -hmm. no that'd be rough what do you guys think of that <laughs> you guys would you guys you you guys would actually just keep giving us money just to see us <laughs> get completely <laughs> obliterated on the air wouldn't you <laughs> uh, i don't know if we can get any worse than i've already done <laughs> <laughs> Some uh Doug says uh do it with Jake. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Mm -mm. Instant classic. I'm like chat. That would be looking. good. It would be. Mm -hmm. My chat is looking But you really can't good. give us you can't give us like uh you can't give us like 50 cents to do it. That's just no. <laughs> no, no, they would we have, have to, to set a, a minimum dollar amount. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to be good questions. They can't just be like, here, here's a dollar. Go, go drink. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be in for that. <laughs> I, I might have well, to. Well, you, you, someone's, someone's got to be able to turn the show off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because be... we wouldn't be able to. Mm. When's he coming back? He's been off the road um, for a while. Yeah, I think he's. I think his last show is like the thirteenth or eighteenth or sixteenth or something. Thirteenth or sixteenth. I That's think so. Super cool. He's been getting to hang out in the UK for yeah. a while, and he escaped COVID the whole time so far. Oh, really? Mm hmm. And they're like completely back to normal. There, like no lockdowns, no no nothing. Yeah, there's no lock. No, there's no nothing. No, no mask, yeah, no lockdown, yeah, no, nothing. no nothing. Yeah, it's just like back to normal. Mm hmm. Interesting. Um, we got a comment from Matt W., uh, which I agree. We should definitely do this. Love the show. Thanks. Um, would love to see more builders like in the beginning. That's what got me hooked. Okay. Um, sure. Who? Sure. Uh, so then Barry said, would like to hear from Todd Sharp. I'm not familiar with Todd Sharp. Or Bogner perhaps covered the bad builders. Well, we had Joe Morgan on. We had Joe had Morgan on. We had Mike Soldano on. Yeah, we've had, we had Bruce Egnator on. Yep. We've had Brian Wampler on. Uh, we've so had really Stevie Fryette on. We've yeah, had right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there might be some new we've had we've had a lot of people already. Um I've asked a few people and they've turned us down. Um same. Yeah. Uh, Rick from Wizard didn't want to do it. Fortin. Uh Fortin didn't want to do it and uh um Bray didn't want to do it. Yep, David Bray. Um I know there was someone else who didn't want to do it also. Um, That's just because they just don't do that stuff, period. Yeah, we don't wasn't hold anything. It yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. I mean I um, I personally think it would be smart to do it. Um 
or to do yeah, some kind of, of on, online promotion but some people are just not comfortable with it i get it yeah uh but yeah i mean there's definitely some people that have been i mean look bogner's been on the list we need to ask him and come on you know yeah <laughs> That's a, that's a whole, you're, you're whole, whole a whole level of crazy. I know. I know. Um, we should do it. Yeah, yeah. Todd Sharp, though, I could do that. Who, where's um, he from? Todd Sharp uh, was uh, well. I, I've known Todd Sharp forever. Todd Sharp makes uh, makes he runs Nashville Amp Repair Service uh, in Nashville. Mm. Um, he was a guitar player that played with Rod Stewart. He was a studio session guy out here. I've known him since I was like 18. And um, and he makes some wonderful amps now, his Todd Sharp amps. Uh, more vintage uh, voiced kind of amps, but they sound incredible. Really good. Really oh. great amps. So that's a good one. We could have um, Dr. Dan on from Canada who makes some yeah. great, great Marshall uh, clone uh amps reproductions you know very very good builder maybe uh shay shay from monomyth you know who i also want to have on is uh fred from divided by 13 oh yeah i can reach out to him we can do that sure yep have him on and uh oh, oh uh we talked about having jason uh jason tong on um from head first amplification in australia he does a lot of right. DIY boards and stuff for a DIY community, and and now he's going to be making his own amplifiers too, um, mostly based in Australia. I mean, they'll ship worldwide, mm -hmm. but he he's super cool, man. We uh we talked recently a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, he's a great guy. That's cool. Their branding looks similar to, to someone I know. Yeah, ori <laughs> originally, yes. Uh, <laughs> Have the, they changed the, that? The, the, well, it all you know. He found his way in the in the world, and it's fine. It's it, we're all good. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, here's a suggestion for a drinking game. I mean, uh, you know, one one could say that the my branding looks like vintage Marshall. Marshalls. That's true. So I mean, I I can't. Okay, right. That's true. That's true. Uh, you know. That's, that's i won't a, deny that it's a true point true point yeah, so. uh fuzz off thanks for the super chat tone talk drinking game anytime you guys guys say depends everyone drinks be vague people <laughs> 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 going to be, be my first friedman jj jr combo love the channel oh cool. awesome enjoy the, the jj jr yeah absolutely i'll drink to that mm. Uh, the the uh, liquor of choice. Uh, someone I don't remember who uh, was very nice to give me a bottle of Balvini, one of my oh, favorites. Nice. So that is, you know, that's the yeah. go-to. It's been sitting here like three weeks or so. So I thought I'd drink some of it. Three weeks. That's a record. Well, if I take it home, I'm in trouble. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, really yeah. drink at work much unless it's I'm doing the talk show. You know, Dina may dive into Actually, it. Actually, I don't even drink that much other than on the show. <laughs> <laughs> anymore oh really not you really dinner? nah I'm, uh, you know i'll go i don't know i'll go seven to ten days without having a single of anything yeah, and then yeah. then i'll maybe i'll have some maybe i won't depends on what i feel like yeah i love when they ask you that i don't question. drink every night people <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> it's that i do not have an issue <laughs> no no not at all um Neither do I, by the way. <laughs> just... I bet you still have the 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 bourbon and rye whiskey from uh, uh, from uh, Neil Giraldo, don't you? Most definitely, yeah. I um almost I, all of it, I bet. I, yeah, so I actually have a full bottle of the rye and the other bottle I gave actually to a friend. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and that was full. I just wasn't drinking it, and it's no no reason to put it to waste. So, uh. Eric Tripton, uh, thanks for the super chat. Dave, been using a clean boost lately. Curious about your golden pearl. Can you give me some detail? This is for overdriving, boosting my plexi type. Um, okay, golden pearl uh, is um, 
fantastic at giving you more of your amp. So it's going to still be full sounding. It's not necessarily pointed in any one direction, meaning it's not <clears throat> mid rangey. It's not uh, lacking in bass. It, it, you know, it just doesn't have too much bass. It kind of just gives you more of the same amp. Um, you can tweak it a few different ways, and there is a tone knob that you can get it a little more cutting if you want. But if you want to take an already crunchy amp and just give it more of the same sound, uh, th that's the pedal for you. Now, if you want to turn it into tighter or uh, brighter, like uh, something like that, maybe the Buxom Boost is better suited for taking that crunchy amp into like, uh, you know, if you're going to tighten it, up, tighten it up for more metal sort of thing or something like that, maybe that might be better suited. Okay, cool. By the way, I um I wanted to mention, you know, we have a, a guitar we're giving away. Um, so I wanted to remind everybody to go to our previous video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and watch the video. Check out the question that we asked. Answer then, the question in the video. Yep. Comment below and, the video. And um, and when we hit twenty thousand subscribers, which uh, where are we at now? We are at twelve thousand. Hang on. Oh, we are at twelve thousand two fifty. No, it's twelve thousand nineteen thousand two fifty five. Come on, people. Nineteen thousand two fifty five. Just a little 745, right? Yep. We need 745. So tell your friends, come subscribe. Tell your wives. Tell your kids. <laughs> Even if they don't watch it, subscribe. Yeah. So you can maybe win the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot a lot of comments on the, on the video. Cool. You're going to have to sift through them. I already have, yeah. 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 Start yeah. sifting, sifting uh, putting the names in a hat. That's going to be a lot of names, um, but it's cool. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to re reach in 20,000 and giving the guitar away. And like we said, it's worldwide. So anybody can enter as long as you are subscribed, have a valid mailing address. And uh, so I can mail it to you. Um, and then what we're going to do also, I thought about this also, is that we're, when we announce the winner, you're going to have to email me and because I have no way of getting in touch with you. So when I announce the winner, the winner needs to get in touch with me. We'll verify your info and then, then we'll go from there. All right. Uh, here's a good question. Oh, and by the way, it's sponsored by Sweetwater. And rem that reminds me, I got some candy today. Um, what did you buy? <laughs> I got two things this week. Uh, well, one from Sweetwater. I actually got a P bass. Oh, cool! Yeah, Which one Fender something. It's a just a Fender, Fender Precision bass. Okay, Mexico. It's the Player Series. Great. Yep, really nice. So I upgraded to a bass, uh, or upgraded the bass that I had, which was horrible. I had an Ibanez Geo bass. It was. It was hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. <laughs> it's a piece of shit. So I wanted to get rid of that. I'm actually getting rid of that. Um, and this week I got a very special. Oh, I just banged it up. Um, very special 84 Kramer. That's super cool. Yeah, they. So I have, John, I have know, a real. I have a real one. You have a real one, right? Well, actually, what? I have a real Beretta. Oh, it's okay. So, but the, the, whole, this... the Holy Grail one with the thin, wide neck and everything. Yeah, does it have this headstock though? The, the around yeah, it's like that kind of yeah. yeah. Um yeah, so they supposedly did my buddy has a couple righties left, I think, at his store at Greenwich Music. Yeah, that's the one they did uh years ago now, right? 84 one. The, the yeah, thing. they did it a few years. They've had it out for a few years now, but um it's like Ed's like uh the 84 tour guitar kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the straight pickup and all that yeah exactly kind of like a beretta but a little different it's like it's like the 5150 really yeah looks like it um yeah that's that that yeah but, it, but he, he started having that in 1984 exactly 
exactly. Yeah. It's just, and they don't make a lefty, so they don't have a production lefty. They just oh. did a short run. That's cool. Uh, which is super cool. I got one of them. I'm super glad. So finally a lefty gets something special. Someone, someone said, Bitto honey is the truth. It's the truth when it pulls out your filling. It's true. <laughs> I love the bit of honeys. They're really good though. I can see that them go, going well with like some kind of alcohol. Really you, good. You, you just have to, uh, you just have to like kind of suck on them, not chew on them. And then, mm-hmm. <laughs> otherwise you might lose a cap or uh, <laughs> filling at this so age something you don't want to do at this age when you're a kid it doesn't matter um any chance of a companion cab for your be mini solid state amp or the other mini heads <clears throat> you know question i gotta say i tried that i tried to make because you'd want it to be inexpensive right uh so i tried to make an inexpensive little like uh, eight inch oriented cabinet and, it, and you know what? It just sounded horrible. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it. <laughs> really? I mean, could we make maybe a 10 inch cabinet? Yes. Would it be much more expensive than the amp? Yes. Um, it's hard to, it's hard to make it. But the trouble is if, if, if you go overseas with the cabinets, yes, they can make the cabinets, but the drivers aren't great. And, uh, and it's hard to find a good one. Mm. so we'll see we'll see how that goes maybe are they are they selling well it's they're selling pretty good yeah mm-hmm. yeah because there was huge demand in the beginning uh yeah i don't know if anyone saw ola's video of the uh of the be mini ad versus the diesel mini no i didn't see it ola's funny <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah we should have like start the, the video it's like it's like all right let's shoot out these piece of shit amps <laughs> <laughs> oh you know it just it's ola right he'd be a good guest to have on it was it was cool you know you know here's the thing it's it, it's like you know it, again it's it, it's not supposed to be the big amp you know so uh, i think you can get good results i think it sounds cool but don't hold it to the big amps. No, it doesn't. It's, it's just not that, you know. You can make music with it. You can make music with lots of people. There's videos out there. People use it. Yeah. Billy Duffy used it in a live gig. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can do it. I would take it to a practice if I had a band. Oh, my bass player actually uh, is coming back. Mm. He moved to Central Florida and hates it with his family. Now he's well, coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I could have told him that. Um, so he could have saved him a lot of expense, man. <laughs> but he's coming back. So uh, I think in April we're going to jam, which I'm looking forward to. Oh, cool. Which is great. Uh, Jay Busk. I ordered a Jet City Silver Hammer. I've never heard that, which is an SIR 39 amp. I've heard it's great at slash Lynch tones, but I want to scratch the Jose itch. Can you compare and contrast the Caswell and Jose Marshall? I, I mean, they're completely different hmm. the number 34 amp which i've worked on would be closer to kind of a jose jose is less gain it really is i mean the sir has another gain stage um different different thing hard hard to say uh man it's been a while since i heard a, a 39 mod hmm um you remember i mean like the, so the one that slash owns is a number 34 that's not the one he used on records but who knows what it really was uh, I, i'm not really positive and no one is really positive so um the one he has is a number 34 sir which he used on use your illusion and that um that amp's just super bright kt88's or 6550s either way uh super bright uh really cutting not tons of gain um so they're kind of different things all right uh forest hey dave what do you think about the marshall origin amps would it be possible to get van halen van halen-ish tones 
Um, I tried modding some of those a little bit. The 20 watt, I can mod kind of if you want to lose the loop. Um, my philosophy on stuff like that is it, it's already so cheap, right? You don't want to put a, an exorbitant amount of money into this amp, right? So you, you just want to have like a basic cool little thing. So in order to do that, I just have to lose the loop and use some of the tube stages for the uh, the mod. The 20 comes out pretty good. The 50 I tried didn't come out great. You'd almost have to rebuild it. So um, could a 20 do it? Yes, with a, with the a mod maybe. Uh, although I, I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to do it or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the transformers in it are really bright. They tend to be really bright. Not the greatest. They, they can get decent results. You might be able to get better results with a pedal into it, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're okay sounding. I mean, it's just like it's crunchy. It's okay. It's not like, but it's I, cheap. You know, yeah, I hated it. I played into one at Sam Ash, and I was just like, "Oh, this is horrible." Yeah, they, it was really um, for me. I couldn't stand it. But, yeah, I mean, uh, you're better off with like uh, one of the, um, uh, you know, the JC Mad Hundred, uh, the Studio Series, the little twenty watts. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I agree with. The, yeah. yeah. I or the flexi version of that the flexi version yeah they're also a little on the bright side they tend to tend to be um the transformers a little harsh sounding but there's some stuff we can do to them to make it sound really cool cool even even, even like the basic plexi one there's some things you can do keeping it a plexi that just kind of round it out a little bit more like an old one the gear hoarder hello mark and dave love the show hey thanks i think i'm a gear hoarder i think i got enough stuff laying around here to buy a house with look at this <laughs> i know i know <laughs> speaking of that i'm going to tell you some stuff i might have for sale oh yeah uh on this show at some point in this this evening here Ooh, that I, I want to get rid of so maybe not yet but yeah. okay i have uh, guitars sitting here i want to get rid of we've got a bunch of um super chats we got to get to yeah that's fine I've, let's I've do seen, those seen them pop up i'm just scrolling here uh cameron bun uh if i love the ds40 head uh head and love the slo30 head what can i get from your lineup that would get me there get you where uh I, I you have a it, so you have a ds40 um, yeah, I'm wondering if he has it or if he just loves them. And he's saying, um, "Well, I, 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 I don't know. Get me where <laughs> um, the DS40. I mean, uh, uh, you're not. I, I don't oh, know what you want. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm not sure. What can I get from your lineup that would get me there? Well, I'm not. Sh if you like that and you like that, what do you want? Something in the middle." <laughs> do you do you want something that does both do you want i need more information cameron yeah just type it in you don't have to send any more money i'll yeah we'll pick it up we'll, we'll watch for it yeah uh andrew paul what's up thanks for the super chat hey dave what's your preference for a switcher between the es8 or the rjm thanks oh um both are good. Uh, I, I kind of approach things with pedal board designs like that where um, how many loops do they need? What price point? What kind, of, how, what kind of editing capability do they need? The nice thing about the RJM switchers is they're, they're all USB compatible. So you don't have to plug in a, uh, a, a MIDI USB interface to them to do any editing. Uh, the boss you do. Um, so the RJM on a pro standpoint might be, might be better because uh, of your backup capability. You can back it, back it up to a USB stick. You can uh, put a great editor into it. It's in crazy with the MIDI that it can do. Um, Although the boss might work out perfectly for someone because it's a slightly cheaper price point, 
Um, they might not need all that. It's relatively easy to use. It works really well. So whenever I'm approaching a build, I always kind of get what the person needs. You could also throw the MusicCom lab switchers into that too. They're, they're great also. So um, all of them are good. <laughs> MusicCom labs, the boss, the RJM, they're all great switchers. Okay. Uh, but maybe one one's, uh, like for instance, the boss will change order stuff. The only RJM that changes order currently is the smaller one. The six looper, which you can do more things with. Uh, it's really kind of seven loops. But um, so the bigger RJM does not change order yet until they do a new version down the road. So uh, the MusicCom Lab stuff has larger switchers that will change order of things. So, uh, but they don't really have an, I don't think they've updated to a great editor yet. Could be wrong with that because I haven't used it in a while. <clears throat> okay. But then you could also throw out there there's a good switchers from um from Gig Rig also that do a lot of things. Right. So I always approach it as what do you need to do? Which one is the best for your situation? All those switchers will do the job and do it well. Okay. Uh, Amanda Coombs. What's up, Amanda? Good evening. How you doing? Tell your Hello. brother I said hi as well. Um, get Dan from Rev Amps. Oh, yeah. Let's do Dan. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. I know Dan. I can, Greg Germino. Reach out. Oh, Greg Germino would be really good too. Thank you. Yeah. Who's Jeff Bober? I've not heard Jeff of him. Jeff Bober was the, uh, I know Jeff really well. Jeff was the Buddha guy originally, Buddha Amps. Mm. Then he had another amp company for a minute, but he had sold to PV years ago. I had done work with Jeff. Hmm. Steve Albini. Love to have Steve Albini. We could we should reach out to him. I think we can get him. Okay. We got some other producers in mind too that we we want to we want to do. So there, there's one that's been in the works for a while, but we have to. I have to hammer him to get him, get him on. Okay. Ask Dave series is the best. Appreciate all, all the info. Well, thanks, Mansfield. Thank you. Property. Appreciate it. Hey, Dave, any thoughts on the passing of Dumble and what you thought of him, his amps? Alexander was an amazing guy. I I, I knew him. Um, I hadn't seen him in a million years, though. Um, but I, I did know him at one point in time in my life. And um, he was always very cool to me, and he was a beautiful individual and very knowledgeable dude. Um, as far as his amps go, they're not really my thing, but, you know, they're obviously very revered amps. Um, beautiful, clean sounds, and some of the, the Fender mods and things that he'd done over the years were just amazing. So... Um, that's yeah. my thing. Overdrive special. The overdrive part is not really my thing. The clean is amazing. Uh, although I I do remember hearing one great one, Steve Ferris's Dumble, which was amazing. Right. Yeah, you did say that. Yeah. But Steve worked with him for endless hours of nauseam to get that hmm. that way. Did Steve say he still had it? Or oh no, he that's long it. gone. Long gone. Yeah, long gone. Yeah, it's too bad that. But he uh, wish he still had it now. No, of course. <laughs> of course. To buy a house. I think, going, I think they're going for $175,000 now. Jeez. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, yeah, it's too bad that Dumble passed away. Um, sorry to hear it. Uh, Andy Fuchs. Oh, I actually do. Um, we do a lot of re um, repair work with Andy Fuchs because he's also a repair service center for us. Um. Yeah, Andy would be great. We can have him on. He's super cool. Okay, I'm taking notes. I can reach, take notes, and I'll, I can reach out or get the emails. Okay. Uh, Scott Splon, I actually had asked. That was the other builder uh, that I had asked a while back, and he was not interested. That's too bad. Yeah, 
Um, just he just wasn't into it. Uh, Roy Blankenship. I know Roy really well. Done work with Roy. Um, Roy, sure. Roy, Roy would be good. Uh, John DeShane, Dave, your cab pack is out. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I actually so, bought it. If you have a two notes, uh, you actually bought it. <laughs> I did. I bought it. Okay. Thank you. Well, well, you know, I I felt like contributing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> How much is it? I don't even know. Thirty nine bucks. Okay. Uh, yes, and the cab pack with two notes is out, and. Uh, if you don't know about that, go watch Michael Nielsen's video on it, the official video. Sounds incredible. Did it at Sunset Sound. And, uh, man, they came out better than I expected. Uh, and and so far, the response seems to have been that, too. Everybody's loving it. Everyone's read, just yeah. like, my God, these are the best ones I've heard, period. That's fantastic. So uh, if you, you know, and, and, you know, you don't have to have necessarily two notes product. You can have their wall of sound when you buy the cab pack and put it in your computer and whatever load you have, you can send into your computer and um, use it. Mm -hmm. But it has to be through a two notes product or um, through um, the, the wall of sound. Yeah. I'm going to work. I'm going to They're not, they're not IRs that you can load anywhere. Right. Yeah. I'm going to mess with them this weekend. Yeah. They're super cool. cool. Um, Let's see. Uh, will we see a Friedman with an integrated two notes IR loader now that you have partnered with Dyn IRs? Anthony Best. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, probably not. But you will see some other Friedman IRs that would will will be baked into future products. Uh, it's a long story, but uh, we we have some other uh, technology where you can just use any IR, so you can use your own hammers. I think to have an open uh, thing Platform. is it, well. I mean, I guess if you had the two notes hardware, you could do both. Um, but we yeah, we're gonna have some other things. So with some other IRs. Okay, but it, it, you this is something we just did to have with the two notes products because they offered a good opportunity for us to do it. And a lot of people have two notes products like Captor X's and different things. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg W. Hello from New Zealand. Mark and Dave. Question for Dave. Why do so many combo amps have the controls on top when the heads have them to the front? Well, if you're standing up, isn't it easier to see the controls on a combo amp that's down by your ankles? If you put it on front, wouldn't it be harder to see the controls? I it, from yeah, it would. I mean, some fenders are that's, on the front. Well, a lot of fenders, I mean, but fenders have an angled panel that um, angle up at you. True. Yeah. So a lot of other things don't like so say like a matchless combo or something, it's all in the front, and so you kind of got to bend down and look. Oh, what am I doing? Right. Right. Um, so uh, you know, I I just kind of did it the English way with mine. So and, and we use the exact same chassis. And if you complain about the fact that the screen printing on the panel is backwards, well, too bad. <laughs> just just too bad. Uh, I, I mean, uh, the screen printing, uh, that's so we can use, you know, have it the same chassis with either a combo or head. And frankly, that's how all the original Marshalls were done. That's how all the original Voxes were done. That's how all the, <laughs> everything was done originally. I've had people complain about this. Like, viciously, viciously. Not a lot. Not a lot of people. But the oh, people really? that did complain about it actually really complained about it huh what kind of idiot would do a panel like the and then i have to explain <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so that's when i bang my head against the table and i mean it's not really that hard to 
be able to, I mean, like, yes, you're looking at it upside down, but uh, there's not that many controls and it's not really that hard to see that it says treble. Yeah, exactly. And once you know your amp, do you even really pay attention to what it says anymore? You just know where the knob is. It's the third one over. Got boom, done. <laughs> Second one over. I mean, I don't, I don't even look. I don't, you know, when I know an amp really well, it's, it's right. Like you don't even have to look at the knob anymore. Exactly. Modern vintage. Maybe, maybe this is just old school and I'm just being crotchety about it, but <laughs> <laughs> probably, Sorry. probably. Um, Modern Vintage, hope you're doing well. Thanks. Uh, Dave, can we get a rundown of John Shank's rig you recently built, including the amps, pedal board, controller? Also, which KTs do you like best for a 100 Deluxe and the proper bias for them? Thanks. Uh, well, okay. A complete rundown? I don't know if I can give you a complete rundown. So That's a uh, lot that, of gear. That was a lot of gear in that, and it, it was sitting in a few videos behind me that we had it had the huge giant pedal board leaning up against it um uh, hopefully we can get maybe a complete rig rundown from him at some point with premier guitar or something um or maybe i will do it or or something like that we should get him on the his, show. his rig his rig yes we're gonna have john on the show his rig is leaving uh on monday so i don't have the opportunity to to really do the rundown um it's a lot of stuff. Uh, there is a currently there's 300 watt Marshall heads in it and one Friedman custom made 100 watt amp. Um, that was a kind of a high, the higher gain amp of all of them, uh, specifically for stuff, you know, from the eighties with Bon Jovi. Um, and uh, other than that, it's a whole shit ton of pedals in front. <laughs> I'm going to make this really simple. A shit ton of pedals in front of all those amps. And then actually those that cabinet, there's an amp switcher that switches between all four amps and uh, is mic'd with a mic. And it goes into an API mic preamp that's in the rack. There's an API EQ next to it. And then a... Um, uh, uh, distressor empirical labs distressor compressor after that and that feeds the post effects so meaning uh the uh for a minute he had a bracosti in there i think a pcm 80s in there now uh and he has uh several pedals several h9s and um a um free the tone a delay pedal and a few other post uh, eclipse, a few other post items, and then the, the mixer, the the stereo outs of the mixer go to front of house. So in other words, that's the mic pre, and they say line level to the front of house. So it's mic like it would be in the studio, hmm. and then the stuff's post. So, so the only way he hears effects is in his in ears and stuff from him. Really? Wow. Yeah. Uh, for the post effects. Um, right. Uh, it's a really cool way to do things. Um, works, works well for him. It's, it's crazy. I mean, there's 24 loops of things. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the pedal board, it's the size of a, you know, the, I can pick the pedal board up, but it's my furthest, as far as I can reach my arms across and I can grab it just barely. <laughs> Uh, you saw it uh, yeah. like in previous videos leaning up against the rack and it was a huge rack yeah yeah uh super cool though it's, it's got a caveman audio uh controller um which was previously known as skid strip um and uh the rack switchers are jam to our jam uh fet gizmos and uh yeah that's the best I can do without it laying here. Right. I'll be seeing him because um, they're coming at some point. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, my wife asked if we if I wanted to go. I'm like, yeah, let's go. We'll check it out. Why not? Do you need a hookup? If I could, yeah. Let me see what I can do. You're the man. Let me know when. I'll, I'll, give, I'll send you the date. The worst he's going to say is no. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know that, you know, I'm sure they got the full COVID lockdown bubble. Yeah, I'm sure it's the full bubble lockdown thing, but but there might be a ticket buy. A well, worst case scenario is that even if there's no no things, there could be a ticket buy or something. Yeah. Uh, kind of thing. So I, I can find out. Awesome. I appreciate it. Uh, Christian Palladino. I don't see your question, though. Um, so I'm going to well, look thank at you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah, appreciate it. If I see your question, um, I'll, I'll grab it. Uh, unfucking believable. Dave's hair care, care products of choice. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> uh, it's uh, hang on. Um, lay right super hold. Lay right super hold. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I'll check that out. Never heard of it. And some hairspray. And some hairspray? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you really... They're doing it. Oh, here's... Well, here's once, you, once you set it, it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> it like stays. That's cool. Uh, I'm just glad they still have hair. I know that. At this age, I'm just happy to have hair. Uh, love the show. Watch them all. Oh, that's awesome, man. Thank you. I wish I could be as nice as Dave answering all these punishing questions. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that bad. No, it's fun. Occasionally it's fun. It gets bad in the emails. But <laughs> well, I can imagine. But, uh, you know, it's not that it's it's I, I'm happy to do it. I love I love this stuff. So it's fine. Uh, SG Lee, your channel is great. Learn so much. Thanks, guys. In a 212 cabinet, is one way better than the other for a 16 ohm load, two 8 ohm speakers, or two 16 ohm speakers? Any sound different? Well, that's a very good question. I, I, uh, I use two 16 ohm speakers for an 8 ohm load, uh, because we don't stock 8 ohm speakers. That's the plain and simple truth of it uh nor do i feel like doing stocking eight ohm speakers it's much easier if i could just stock one mm. uh and no then no mistakes are made either <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that someone grabs the wrong speaker out of the wrong pile and then all of a sudden they have one eight ohm speaker shoved in with four three sixteen ohm speakers no um does it sound different well you know what that's a test that someone should actually do uh i don't think much if anything uh so uh i i i know i like the way our 212 sounded eight ohms with our vintage 30s in them and in actuality when comparing and 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 people ask me this all the time well why does the why does the 212s have vintage 30s because i thought that speaker sounded the best in the enclosure hmm um i tried a bunch of other stuff don't, don't get me wrong i did but um it was just the best it actually the the 212 sounded the most like the mixed 4x12 with two vintage 30s believe it or not hmm. when you a bead the two with an amp with a switch amp switcher interesting yeah so uh i think something about the punchiness of the vintage 30s in a 212 enclosure which is a little less punchy just kind of kind of works. So I I I, I always say the vintage thirty sound really good in our two twelve cabinets. Mm -hmm. okay. I've even gone, you know, when we've done clinic tours, and where we have different cabinets at different times. Sometimes, sometimes it's two twelve, sometimes it's four twelves, and in reality, the two twelve horizontal cabinet, the the original one that we had, because that's the only one we had out when we did the clinic tours uh, uh sometimes i thought actually sounded better than the 412 in in listening from an audience perspective hmm. so kind of interesting yeah uh bmo mark you could pin a comment to the video about the winner has to email you good suggestion i will do that appreciate it uh shredward Dave, I saw Shredward. you at Nam. I like that name. Yeah. <laughs> saw you at Nam 2020 was asking about the highest gain amp that you make and you said the butter slacks. Any plans on making a higher gain amp in the future? 
Like there's no need. Out. No, there's no need for more gain. <laughs> I knew this was your answer. No, no, no. I can't see a m more gain How than could the you have more gain. I just don't understand. At at some point in time, what you're trying to accomplish is you're just actually making a bigger ball of mush. The sound uh, gets you, smaller. You, it gets smaller. The, yeah. the 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 less gain, even for heavy things, almost the better because it sounds bigger and punchier. So, no, please, no, no. <laughs> the answer is no, no, no. Um, uh, the way you say you have a real Beretta is sipping on that whiskey, just like Dave. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I also have a real pacer. Kramer pacer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Which I've been toying with the idea of if I want to sell it or not. Mm. What year? Early 80s. Mm. Pacer, black. They just came out with a uh, release, them pacer classics. I mean, the, the really, the, the necks on the original pacers are amazing. Hmm. Just like, mm, so maybe I don't want to sell it. It's a maple yeah. bodied one. Oh, is it heavy? The ESP made neck on the Pacer or the Beretta? Definitely on the Beretta. And um, if ESP made the early Pacer necks, then it's definitely an ESP neck on the 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 Pacer. Hmm. Also, it it's 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 a little heavy, but it sounds good. Uh, it needs a it needs new frets. They're just pretty low, mm. um, but it's in perfect shape. Other than that, uh, I, they've gone up in price a lot. <laughs> yeah, they have. They're, they're like lot. around two grand now. Maybe a little less, eighteen, two, something like that for original Pacer in black. Super cool guitar. I was even thinking the Beretta would be even more. Well, the Berettas, the the one I have is known as the Holy Grail one, and right. that's like a ten thousand dollar guitar. Is it really? Yeah, eight wow. to ten thousand or something. Well, the eighty four that I got was was just made, dude. So. That 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 guitar is super cool. I I love it. I'm totally psyched about it. It sounds good too. The mm -hmm. uh, which is you know like you were JB you were, JB, and it's got the coil split. So when you yeah, split J, it, JB is always good. Yeah, it sounds really nice. JB uh, is the quintessential 80s rock pickup. Uh, always works. Always sounds good. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what is the best favorite rig Dave has put together? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Man, there's been so many over the years. I that's a I you're stumping me on that one. Um well, okay. Eddie Van Halen or Steve Stevens? Come on. Can't. Either one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Either one. It's got to be Eddie. Um, I'm looking for uh, Christian Palladino. He sent a super check. I see it right here. Again. Um also, regarding my 71 and 72 Super League converted to Super Bass specs, are there any master volume mods that sound good? I had PPIV mo mod done and took it out. Didn't sound that great to me. Not particularly, no. Um, especially if you have Super Bass specs, it tends to not like that. Uh, your best best thing you could do is like buy a, a fry at power station to be honest 100 watt the ps100 yeah like mark has right in the background if you could see me pointing my mouse i'd be pointing my mouse at it. i don't know why i'm pointing my mouse at it <laughs> right there <laughs> that's what my plexi is plugged into so yeah it's um, awesome yeah it's great uh dave difference between a ww20 the Wildwood 20 and the JJ Jr. Uh, Wildwood 20 is voiced darker like a pink taco. Uh, has some similarities in everything, but overall the voice is a 
darker, smoother voice. Uh, I mean, the sat is pretty much the same. The power section is a little different. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot of similarities. I mean, the Wildwood 20 amp is cool. It does a lot of stuff. And to be honest, if, if it's too dark for you, there is one cap you can cut out and it'd be bright. Mm. <laughs> so then then it would be very much closer to the the jj and the other one's hand built and the other ones no they're all they're they're both pcb are they both pcb yeah the wildwood too oh, yeah I yep. I didn't know that. okay cool uh, and, and that doesn't make any difference at all no but it did on price at the time when a, if you had a hand wired hmm. it's gonna taco, be cheaper yeah well, for sure, because I mean, God, I mean, okay, hand wiring doesn't mean that it's better, and please get that out of your mind. Um, and, and, and in some respects, it means it's maybe technically it could be worse. Um, how you do a PC board is the real important factor, it's like how thick plated through holes two ounce copper how it's laid out all that matters a shitty pcb sucks mm. a good pcb is fantastic uh it does cut out cut down on some labor to make the product um but in reality a lot of times you can put parts closer to where they're going on a pcb than you can in a hand wire amp mm. So in turn, you're actually cutting down on signal path length of things. So um, just a little rant. No, no, it's cool. We've talked about that before, but yeah. yeah. Um, we'll love to see Ola, Jason Tong uh, uh, head first, yep. and Simon Hosford. I know Simon uh, on the show. That'd be show. cool. Yeah, cool. Definitely. I could reach out to Ola and Jason. Okay, I do that. Yeah. Let me write this down. Jason watches a lot. He might be watching right now. And if you're watching, why don't you put something in the chat? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Jason's secret. I don't know what his name is. So I think, uh, or maybe it is his name. I don't know. Um but I know he watches all the time, or maybe he watches after the fact. Maybe he doesn't do it live. Yeah, yeah. no, he wouldn't be doing it live. It'd be eleven o'clock in the morning, I think, for them right now. Oh, maybe he would be doing it live. Yeah, they could be. Uh, Rusty Shackleford. Hey guys, what features or special specifications can I keep an eye out for when looking for a tube amp that sounds good at low volumes? Ah. Uh... Uh, I don't know how to answer that one. Um, I mean, all my amps sound good at low volumes. That the same thing can't be said for a lot of other amps. Um, so you, if you were looking at my amps, it probably sounds good. There's nothing. There's not one feature that you can look at that will tell you if it sounds good at low volumes. You're just going to have to uh, kind of listen to some things and decide for yourself. I hope that answered it. Yeah, that's a, it's a hard thing. I mean, it's not like there's a specific feature that you could look for that's going to tell you whether an amp is good at low volumes or not. You just have to try. Exactly. It. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> uh, time to drink. Uh oh. <laughs> Cheers. CNC <laughs> uh, CNC tomatic. Thanks. Hey, Dave, can you discuss reducing hiss from a pedal board? Mine has 11 pedals. Each has his own isolated power source. Wondering if I need a switcher. So you're experiencing... Uh, so in other words, you're experiencing hiss, meaning with your guitar off into the pedal board, and if you unplug the pedal board from the front of the amp, you're hearing a difference in the noise floor, hiss-wise. Uh, if so, um, yes, I mean, some pedals, depending on what they are, will be problematic. I remember, um, like an Eventide H9, if it's not in true bypass mode, 
will have an exorbitant amount of hiss into a front of an amp. Um, there's a bunch of other pedals that, that have that. Some don't. Some don't really add to it. Um, so I have no idea what you're using. But would a switcher help? Yes. A switcher, a switcher or even a true bypass strip would take each of the pedals out of the chain. So when they're not being used, you basically should have no extra hiss into the front of the amp. Um, uh, the really good strips are made by um, um, in England. He's been on our show. <laughs> hey, Greg, thank you. Oh, Daniel. <laughs> Mental block for a minute. Uh, he makes some amazing strips that are awesome. Uh, I mean, particularly tiny and great. Hmm. Um, I did a rig for some guy recently that had one of those on it and it was just fantastic. Really well made, really cool. So get his strips. Tell him I sent you. Cool. Uh, Danny, thanks for the super chat. Hate Mark and Dave. Have you tried the 51 and 50 iconic? For the money, they did a great job with it. Also, thanks for these awesome shows. All the best. Hey, thank you. I have not tried a 5150 Iconic. Um, I, I, they haven't stocked it in any of the stores that I've seen. So um, I'm not planning on buying one, but I'd like to try it. Just check it out. Yeah, I, I, no, I haven't tried it. Um, I'm sure James Brown did a good job with it. Uh, I'm sure he was very inventive on how he did the stages and stuff with it. Um some of the videos I've seen had sounded good. So, yeah. I mean, I had nothing. I mean, great price point. Fantastic yeah. price point. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I mean you're, you're, you're a kid. You want to play guitar. You want to play some heavy guitar. I mean, you can get one of those in a cabinet and fucking make some heavy sounds, you know? Be cool. Well, one, one thing that I read from Wolfgang, he said that this was the last product that, uh, that Ed signed off on. Mm hmm So even just for that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, remember, just remember, it's not supposed to be, I was told about this product, that it's not, it is what it is for the price. Right, you're, you're not going to you, compare you it to don't the... don't expect, I mean, how much is the head? Eight something? Eight ninety nine? It's some, it's or, in, yeah, maybe 900 bucks top. $900 or something. You're not going to get a $3,000 amplifier out of it. It's a nine hundred dollar amp, and the cabinet is how much? That I don't know, six or something or something. I mean, some ridiculous amount of money. Um, you're not gonna get the fifty one fifty, the higher end fifty one fifty out of it. it. It's just not. It's made for the lower end, and I think it does a great job at it, from what yeah. I've seen. I, so. I, I have a I, Joe, the guy from uh, a friend of mine from Greenwich Music. He played one and sent me a clip. Sounded good. Yeah. He was playing some Van Halen. Sounded good. That's cool. Yep. Um, Ryan Hendricks. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Dave, thoughts on noise suppressor gate pedals? Tone suckers? Four cable into the BE50 Deluxe. I only use the BE and the HBE channel for the drive, but also run two even tied H9s in a loop for some H9 effects are loud. Um, tone suckers um not necessarily um i mean um they can be problematic depending on which one you have so if you have like say a g series um decimator right decimator pedal um uh, the isn't it the g series or something uh, the one that you put pre and post. Uh, so your, your guitar goes into it essentially. And then the, that goes to the front of your amp. And then in the loop of your amp goes the other half of the pedal. It creates a ground loop by the way, between all that. Mm -hmm. So, so then you're hushing a ground loop, but there's ways to fix the ground loop. So you got to know about that. Will it add a little bit of hiss on the front end? Yes, it will. Uh, so there's that to deal with. Um, uh, but it works well, you know, the, the decimator stuff works really well. Um, 
you know, Sammy Bowler uses a decimator pedal in pre and post in his, in his B100 uh, that he uses and his pedal board. Mm-hmm. It works out really well. I mean, we've solved all the ground loops, of course. Um, other than that, I mean, you can also use other different um, gates, but it's kind of nice at that point to have like kind of a switcher that you can pull things in and out of loops. So then you go to a clean sound, you can pull the gate completely out. You know, it doesn't have to be in there. So you don't need that pre and post thing. So there, there's lots of way to look look at it. No, it's, they're, they're not necessarily tone suckers. Okay, cool. And then as far as everything else you said, um, some H9 effects are loud. I, I, mean, I guess that depends on how it's programmed. Yeah, I was going to say, you might have to go into the individual program and lower the, the level mm-hmm. for that specific you know patch um okay let's see dan pfeiffer asked are eggnator amps still in production the ones that are made overseas i think they are right i think some eggnator amps are still in production like some limited tweakers and different things uh, some of the smaller ones Yep. And of course, Bruce is still making amps. Um, uh, Bruce yeah. makes, well, I mean, Bruce mostly does classes now, mm-hmm. uh, occasional amp he sells, and um, he's making the preamp again. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Mike K. Hey, Dave, got your two notes cab collection late last night. Sounds great so far. Still getting into it. Do you have a certain cab you like for my twin sister? Tough choice. Thanks. Man, I mean, you know, uh, probably the, my two favorite cabs of the pack. Well, I mean, okay. There's, there's how, how can you, like, they're all your cabs. How can you really give the favorites? But <laughs> So this is 6402 cones, the old wood cabinet that I have. That's been a, a, a something I've used for years and years and years and years. I mean, it appears in a video long ago with George Lynch where I was doing some stuff with Randall. You know, like, it, it's long. I've had it forever. George has tried to buy, buy it from me for, like, a million times. Really? Yeah, he's uh, all the time. He's like, can't, can't, let me buy it. No. <laughs> um. It's a cool sounding cab. It's super cool. That's a super cool in the pack. The 65 watt uh, cab that I have in the pack, which is sitting behind me on the left hand. Well, I don't know how the screen pans out there, but the Marshall, that's a, the thing that says Marshall behind me. That's mm. the 65 watt vintage cab. And um, that's a cool sounding cab. I really like it. Uh, um, it's funny. I never really considered that speaker until I, I kind of stumbled upon this cab and, 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 uh, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's really good. I like that cab. Hmm. It's cool sounding, it's, uh, super cool. So that one's great. And, and the standard Friedman cab that's in it, the V30 and the, the, the standard greenback is also cool. Um, so you have between those three, you really have it. Now the, the 30 watt, cab that i have um the vintage third not vintage 30 but the actual vintage greenback 30 cab that we have uh is super cool sounding too it's just just more saturated and it has just a different voice to it i i i mean i think with all the mics that are available with all these cabs and the cabs themselves i mean you can get whatever sound you want yeah, yeah. we got you we got you covered all the the whole pack has you covered no matter what kind of music you're doing if you had to pick one though for that would be voiced best for uh which what did Anthony say he's got uh, uh, uh 6402 the 6402 cab i think is cool yeah okay i don't know you got the cab you got the pack did you play i haven't it? tried it I haven't tried oh. i i bought it i bought it this morning and just worked all day and have not had a chance to plug in um modern vintage Mark, you're an amazing host and much more. Thank you. Hey, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate that. I'll take that. Mark generally <laughs> just gets hate. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> oh, that's too funny. Give Mark a break. He does a lot of work here. I People. do. I do. Uh, but it's fun. This I show wouldn't it. happen without him. So there you go. Oh, I appreciate that. I'm going to steal that quote um, and put that video. Uh, Jen T, love the show. What are you guys drinking tonight? Also, take a drink. <laughs> okay. All right. Cheers. I got I got a little bit left. We got uh Belvini 12, double wood 12. Whoops, wait. No, no, there we go. Yeah, I hate that. Sorry, I don't uh, know which way to move it. Corona. I'm just doing a light tonight. But thank you, Jen. I appreciate it. <sighs> Mark doesn't really uh do the whiskeys too much. No, no, it's too strong. Um oh we have some Someone had asked this earlier. Uh, we answered that about the 5150 Iconic. It was horrible on the matching cab, but on a greenback cab was way different. Yeah, well, you know, the cabs are always well, going to change. Well, you know, it's, it's, again, the price point. Yeah, check out a different cab, and it could sound completely different. Yeah. Um, okay, Super Chicks. Thank you. Hey, guys, hope all is well. Would be great to get Ronnie Latecro on. Do you is know he him? still around? So, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I think that would be great. Who is he? Uh, Lon, Ronnie Latecro was from, um, was it TNT? <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm a little, I've been drinking a little now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you can't remember. Uh, that's funny. Hang on, I'll, I'll have the answer. Okay. Ronnie Latecro. Hey. I got to Google it. Ronnie Latecro. There we go. Um, yeah, he was from. Um, what band was he from? I know what band he was from. Someone answer this question for me, please, so I don't have to look at this. <laughs> TNT. Okay, you had it right. I was right. Time. Yeah. So I was right. I just had a mental block. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> Jason Tong, thank you. Hey, Dave, thanks for your help. And there support. we go. See? Jason's oh, there. That's his, his actual name, and he was watching. Oh, especially for advice. Jason, on the you want to come on the show? You should come on, Jason. I'm performing on my 69 50-watt Plexi. You're welcome. Nice. No problem. Awesome. Cool. It's like J Jason shows me pictures, and I'm like, "Do this, do that," and then he he does some stuff, and he does a video, and then I'm like, "You know, you really should do this too," <laughs> <laughs> and that, and this. <laughs> Guest wish list, Michael Wagner. Oh, we were trying for that, we and we got close. <laughs> Maybe we should try again. Now they retired. Yeah. Um, you still have his email, Mark? I'll have to check. Um, we were trying for a while, but now he re he actually retired. So maybe because the excuse at the time was he was busy, wasn't it? It was it was like he couldn't do it because he was busy. I think so. I think I so. To, it's 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 been a long time, so I can't yeah. remember really. I would love uh, Michael Wagner's awesome, and that would be a great show. I'll put it down. I'll re, I'll re re engage. It's really not the Ask Dave show. It's the who's we're going to have on next show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Daniel Petrick. Hello, gents. Dave, how do you choose an OT? I guess he means output transformer for your designs. How does an 8K OT sound versus a 4.2K? And does oversizing an OT, OT have any drawbacks? OT. Okay. Okay. Um, 8K, well, you're talking about a 20-watt output transformer then, I would imagine. Uh, our 20-watt output transformers are 8K. Um, how does it sound versus a 4.2K? Very good question. I've never done it, hmm. so I can't answer you. Uh, oversizing an OT doesn't really have much drawbacks. Uh I mean, as far as OTs, like we we kind of like started with things that we knew, so 
you know, like hundred watt OT, OTs are based on a on a vintage Plexi OT. Um, the um, which everything was based on the you know fifty watt was based on a vintage fifty watt transformer. The 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 uh, twenty watt was based on an old twenty watt Marshall transformer. So um, kind of was all based in in the past, so to speak, you know. Right. Uh, so um, if it worked, it worked. We liked it. We did it. We used it. It's, it's kind of that simple. Okay. And you got to uh, remember, like everything, everything. Um, we're we're trying to make amps of the past. Really, we're always trying to make amps of the past, sort of, with new modern twists. But but still, everyone seems to want the uh, heritage that has evolved over the years. Mm-hmm. Um. So, I mean, you have to analyze all that stuff, you know. A lot of mo- modern OTs sound bright and sterile and harsh. So I'm really careful not to have that. So, Okay. Stephen Mike L1, uh, have you guys heard of Yuge Valerverta? Uh, no. No idea. Enlighten us, please. Yep. I don't know if I pronounced that right or if this was some trick name that's going to make me sound like I'm saying Mike Cunt or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Huge Valorita. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't no, know. I know. We, I don't know who that is. No. Uh, Harmonicaster, what's up? Did you see the, about the guy who made one six and quarter versions and now making half scale grateful dead wall of sound all that macintosh mc 2300 goodness no i didn't see that didn't see any of that six and quarter scale versions and and now lightness <laughs> wow interesting um thanks for letting us know i'll check it out uh where are we at? Thanks for the super chat. Uh, Leather Wolf. I think that's what it, what it stands for. What are your guys' opinions on Mezzabarba? How about bringing them into the chat? I'd be okay with that. I don't I don't really have a problem with bringing anyone in. Yeah. Um, you know, I like to bring in the guys from Red 7 also. Oh, yeah, Luca. Yeah. He, he started the Italian tone talk. Remember that? No. I told you about that. It was yeah, maybe you did, but I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> they they did a few uh, episodes as Italian Tone Talk. Uh, Luca's cool. Um, mm-hmm. He makes a lot of cool products, and uh, and sure, why not? Mesa Barbara, sure, why not? Um, Mesa Barbara makes cool amps. I mean, I think they're more Soldano based, um, but I'm more Marshall based, so. Mm-hmm. That's that's fine. Cool. I don't really. Uh, know I don't. Him. I don't know anybody. I've, I've talked to him. I've talked to it. I, I think I briefly said hi at trade shows, um, but uh, I don't really know him. Hmm. We have a super chat from KGS nineteen eighty two. Thank you. And I see the question. I think it's right here. Uh, I personally am waiting for the big Randall Smith episode. Dave, you were amazing, by the way. Uh, Randall Smith, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I don't know. That's a good question. Hmm. Uh, he's got some splaining to do. Uh, I, no, I, I, <laughs> just no, I wouldn't bring it up. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just wouldn't bring it up. Uh, uh, no, Randall has done tons of stuff in this industry, and of course, um, yeah. I think I think uh, he was the kind of originator of boutique, so to speak. And uh, I think uh, there's a lot to be said for that, and I I think I respect him fully. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I was yeah. just joking. Um, 
Ryan Casey. Thanks, Dave and Mark. You guys rock. Thank you. You too. Any thoughts on powering just two pedals, or should I just suck it up and get the power grid? Well, you can get something smaller if it's just two pedals. And really, if that's all you need to do, how about uh, a one-spot PBC-6? Um, uh, PBC-6 is a very thin, little, tiny power supply. Fits under those um little pedal train um nano uh, pedal boards and it f literally fits underneath this thin little pedal board so you can literally have like the nano comes in several sizes you can have this little tiny backpack of a pedal board with this great power supply underneath so i, I mean it has six outputs but it's still more than you need but it's cheaper and it fits under the nano and you can put the two pedals on the nano and that's cool. Hmm. Okay. Richard Knoll. Thanks for the super chat. Dave opinion on a 1992 G 130th anniversary issue. 100 watt Ooh. three channels, JTM 45 JCM 800 and 900. Any good. Have you heard it? Ah, Man, that that amp had. I remember when that came out, and um, nice idea. Uh, it had lots of issues, um, reliability issues, and other things, and it just it did not go over very well. Hmm. You don't really see a, see them around. I've never seen one. Uh, so uh, I would. I mean. I hope you don't have it. <laughs> I don't. I don't mean to insult you, but it's not that great of an amp. Mm. Wow. Um, they did much better. I mean, like literally, the nine hundred series was much better, which came after. Mm. Okay. Uh, we got a lot of super chats. I know, so I want to make sure we get to them. Uh, Be one hundred deluxe. Uh, capsule to cone, by the way, uh, B100 Deluxe, and I'm loving it. If volume isn't an issue, attenuated load box, what's the best practice for dialing system and master volumes on a BE channel? Okay, well, uh, you can listen to it two ways. So turn the system master to eight and turn the channel masters to whatever you want them to be. Or turn the channel masters to five and set the system master wherever you want it to be. Uh, both sound a little different. You you decide which one you like better. Hmm. That's cool. Good advice. Yeah. Um, let's see. Anon Suleiman, thank you. Hey, Dave, putting a rack together with a Marshall JMP1 Pre and Fry at Power Station 100. Uh, how important is it to leave a gap between the two units to overheat and damage? Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, the 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 frag gets hot, so it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to leave a gap if you can. And it kind of makes sense—a four space rack, very common rack size. Mm -hmm. probably, yeah, so I mean, you, you probably don't have to, but not a horrible idea. The, the, the fry I can get pretty hot. I mean, if you're really driving it yeah. hard. I recently, recently, um, uh, a fry at Power Station blew up because a Warren D. Martini blew up a fry at Power Station recently. Really? And um, we're, we were like trying to figure out why. And apparently, it was just sitting on top of the power, you know, the, the sitting on top of the vents of the Marshall. And it's just like heat upon heat upon heat. And that might have been the, the cause. So sometimes it's better to have some ventilation, hmm. especially if you're running a 100 watt plexi on 10 into the damn thing. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Uh, hey, Dave, a while back you said you bought a v PV VTM. Did you? Now I haven't. Think of it? Oh, yeah. Did, did it sound like an 800? No, it's not an 800. You know what? It's like a, a cross between, um, well, first of all, you have to know how to set the switches. And you're only going to know how to set the switches if you look at the schematic. <laughs> so um, 
I would essentially say, so what that originally came from was uh, it, they looked at Mark Ferrari's Jose modded Marshall. And they wanted to do their take on it. So um, basically, uh, the, the, the PV can be a Jose. There's a few things that bring it into the 800 territory. There's a few different things about it. But it can be basically Jose with clipping diodes and everything. Um, but, um, I mean, it has more DNA in Jose than it does in anything. I, I have one here, actually, I have to modify for someone. Hmm. So I'm modding it to be a little bit more of what it should be. Yeah. It's just a few changes. The They're... power section is a little different. So they, they kind of started with their butcher amp which was an 800, essentially, uh, the PV version of an uh, JCM 800. And they took that and kind of added the Jose changes to it. Hmm. So it, it was kind of a crossbreed between the two. Gotcha. Yeah. A cool amp. Uh, you know, what's incredible about that amp uh, is the, um, the head shell. So PV in those days made everything like bulletproof, you know? So the head shell is like particle board or something, and it's it's coated in like bed liner kind of material, right? You know, like mm -hmm. so it's it's not Tolex, and the head shell actually weighs more than the whole chassis with with the transformers on it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it weighs more than the whole chassis, the whole chassis, and everything in it. it. Yeah. So. Um, because it's like particle board and it's really thick sides. And like, if you look at a picture of it, you'll understand. Um, but, but I swear to God, you could, you could probably toss that thing out of the back of a truck and nothing would ever happen to it. <laughs> they did build things like tanks. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they, they did. And that was their thing back then. And that, that was mm -hmm. the thing. So I think it's actually kind of a cool amp. The effects looks a little iffy. Uh, should probably be not used. Oh yeah, <laughs> the, but but uh, well, because the the send side of it is sort of passive and not active, and the return side is active, but it's a little weird. You would lose some top end if you used it. Hmm. So, um, just the archaic loop technology at the time, right, right? Could be fixed. We'll see if I do that on this one. I'm doing. Well, I gotta cool. see if it's if it's viable to to mickey mouse it in there because the way the circuit board is it's, uh i don't know i don't think i've ever seen a modded vtm yeah they they exist occasionally yeah. but it's it if you don't forget about the loop if you don't want to deal with that the rest of the front end mods quite easy hmm. yeah okay. should be cool it sounds pretty good even stock to be honest but again, you got to know where to set the switches. Right, right. Yeah. If you don't right. know where to set the switches, you can make it sound really flubby and crappy. <laughs> so. Gotcha. By the way, everybody who's watching the show right now, please hit subscribe. Hit the bell. Make sure you get all our notifications. And if you are a subscriber, you should enter our contest that we have going on for uh, to win a guitar, win a Kramer SM1, a Stage Master. Uh, that I mentioned before. So watch the previous video, answer the question in the video, and uh, subscribe. Subscribe. Get your girlfriend to subscribe because no one's winning anything until we get to twenty thousand. Yep. So um, you know we have well, about seven hundred and fifty close to it. Yeah. Close to it left. So um, yeah. Yep. Please. We could get there in a month, or we could get there in a few weeks. So just tell everybody. Um. What's that? All right. So first up on the sale. Oh, we're going to a sale. All right. <laughs> well, we'll it. go back to this. We'll do one. Okay. okay. We'll do one. So <clears throat> this is a satin matte black um, rubbed, rubbed in finish 
a uh, custom guitar made with a mighty might neck original german floyd rose and a duncan 57 classic in the bridge super cool guitar sounds great i just don't need it <laughs> what are you asking for uh, this one's cheap 600 bucks oh wow no case I'll restring it and take all the guck off the fingerboard as long as you want me to. And if not, I'll ship it like it is. Um, <laughs> um, I've used this forever. I've had it forever. Sounds really good. Um, and it's a great neck. It's got smaller. It's more like um, the neck uh, medium jumbo frets and the neck feels more like, you know, like the 5150 kind of neck, which or Ernie Ball sort of neck. It's a little on the smaller side, you know. Mm. Can I show it again but it's it's really super cool it's it's a rubbed in matte black finished um body so it's a uh, it's an ash body that's oh, nice and it's super cool looks like it's been played the shit it it's got a lot of dirt yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll clean that all off for you though <laughs> oh, maybe someone will want it but um i mean that's a, a super cool guitar and you know for 600 bucks man you should buy it Someone should email Dave. Email Dave. What's Friedman, email again? Friedmanamps at gmail.com is fine. So you want the other ones too? Yeah. That I might it. sell. Yeah. So EBH stealth. Nope, not stealth. Limited edition sassafras body. Oh, nice. Uh, a satin finish black, roasted maple neck, was a limited run. They don't make them anymore. Um, EVH pickups, great guitar. Um, I, I like it's like a fifteen hundred dollar sale price for that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's limited. Edition. It's not. It's a limited run. And uh, and that's a reasonable price. I've seen people try to sell them for more. Super cool. Uh, not. I don't think there's a nick on it. I'm looking right now. Super cool. Awesome. Awesome. And one more. Similar. Or oh, Charvel. Charvel sassafras body again jb uh two seymour duncan single coils i forgot what they are locking tuners hardtail bridge um you know what shit i don't know what the price of this one all right well email you if someone's interested in the guitar if someone's interested in that guitar email me It'll be a fair price. It won't be expensive. Super cool guitar, though. Sounds yeah. sounds really good, actually. I just don't need it. I have a ton of guitars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three guitars. Three guitars are up for auction. All right. Make sure you email Dave <laughs> if you're interested. Um, Rob's Back to Super Chats. Yeah. Rob's Tone Zone. Dave, just started using the C45 switch um on my be it seems to have an 800 s quality what was what was the intent what does it actually do to the circuit circuit loving it mark when we hear will we hear you play you when, you heard him play on the intro yeah i every time we do the beginning of the show i play um, um the the c45 uh yes you you have that right it has a uh 800 s quality to it for sure it has a kind of a little more sparkle a little more push a little more bass uh if you set the gain structure switch at the minimum it's very much an 800 um you're right it's 800 s qualities uh what was the intent uh it it was just a different voicing that I had going on at the time, and and it was uh, a super cool one. There's I have many artists that use that. It's really cool. A little more bass, a little more sparkle to it, a little more gain. 
I know people always ask me, when are we going to hear you play, Mark? I mean, the show is called Tone Talk. So um, we're talking. We're talking. So, I mean, it's not really a show where, like, I'm going to play or Dave's going to play. Um, so, and we don't do demos or anything like that. So, but I, um, if you, if you uh, friend me on Facebook, I'll post some clips and play. I haven't done that in a while. I'm shy, but. <laughs> But yeah, I, I do someone play. messaged me somewhere about one of the guitars already. Oh, good. Uh, I saw it pop up, and I have no idea where they messaged me. I got to look. I got to look at that. <laughs> so hang on, I'll answer your messages. Uh, Michael Landau would be nice. Yeah, my, won't we do asked, it. We, we asked, tried. We asked Michael. Unfortunately, he declined. He just said it wasn't his gig. It wasn't his bag. Uh, which is totally cool. I was I was even just impressed that he got back to me and let me know. So, uh, Rummy, thank you. Tortured by answers, it depends. <laughs> if I run a Mesa five band EQ in the loop of a small box fifty, will I overwhelm the power tubes? I'm shooting for a John Sykes vibe. A Mesa five band EQ. I I don't think see why. Yeah, they do make an EQ. I don't see why um, that would overwhelm the power tubes. Hang on. Sorry. Uh, someone texted me about something. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, five band EQ, small box 50. No, it won't overwhelm anything. Not not at all. You can you can EQ at will. Go for it. Put it in the loop. Done. Suck the mids out. Boost them. Whatever you want to do. Excuse me. Uh, loving the cab pack dave been trying it with all my amps today it's combustion thanks combustion appreciate it man and uh, i'm gonna be playing with him this weekend cheddar kung pao what's up man hey dudes other brands release supposed plexi reissues but they never sound right where do you, where do you think they go wrong appreciate you both <clears throat> um Probably the transformer, one of them. Well, I mean, uh, it's 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 a lot of everything. So, uh, yes, yeah, sometimes they're transformers. Sometimes it's the choice of parts that they used in the amp. Sometimes it's the choice of spec they've used. Um, I mean, I guess saying a Plexi clone is a is is a pretty wide open area. What do you what do you want your Plexi? What in your head, what does a plexi sound like? Tell me. Is that Hendrix? Is that Eddie Van Halen? Is that uh, uh, Ace, uh, Angus Young? Is that uh, uh, Paul, Free Paul or Kossoff, Paul yeah. Kossoff? Uh, what is that? Tell me. Tell me what it is because there's different ways of setting things up differently, and they were different amps. Just because it says plexi doesn't mean it's some of them were JTM 45, some of them were uh super bass amp some of them were there's a variety of things and how they were used so um there's also a variety of specs on what those amps might or might not be so uh to know so when i do my plexi amp i'm shooting for a specific plexi amp and that will be the one i have but there's so many and i've worked on so many um you know if you you, you say hey i want angus young's black fat flag plexi okay well that's a whole different circuit hmm. so um you gotta know what caps to use resistors to use voltages to use you have to know what tubes to use transformers to use it all kind of plays into the recipe and unless you're really well versed in these amps and have worked on hundreds of them it's hard to really do hmm. or maybe you don't have as good of ears as other people I, you know it's it's uh, I, it's hard to what's the target where are you shooting for? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. What's the goal sound? Yeah. What's the yeah. goal sound? I mean, like if you say I want, you know, the the free Paul Kossoff kind of thing, it's more of um, you know, a Marshall that was cranked to like six. 
not all the way. Mm -hmm. And all the EQs were kind of more in the ballpark of that. And, you know, it was a Les Paul and it was semi broken up and it's, it's, it's a different thing. Yeah. So. Uh, L Scott music, Dave, I have me and some friends were talking. It'd be nice if synergy did a little more color. Any chance for some gold font on the BE deluxe model? Uh, I'll bring idea. that up. Uh, you know what? Actually, gold is impossible to print. So probably not going to happen. Hmm. Gold metallic, uh, unless you silk screen it, is impossible to print. So generally the panels of, UV, uh, of um, Synergy modules are UV printed. So it's a printer that prints a UV cured ink and it's impossible to do a metallic. Hmm, so, um, well, there's some new metallics from out, but there's issues with them and they they clog the machine and it's a problem. So, so unfortunately can't do that. Okay. Uh, this is a perfect question, uh, as Dave will be building my rig uh, with an HX effects unit. Um, have you created rig using an HX effects unit? And if so, what are your thoughts on how it sounds? I think the HX sounds really great. It does a lot of things really well. I think uh, ultimately maybe you'd want a few additional analogy kind of pedals with it. Um, because maybe some drive pedals and things are cooler in the analog realm than the digital realm. Um, uh, it's quite good. It, you know, it has its issues and there's things that you have to know to uh, fix the ground loop issues that it'll have with doing a four cable method with an amp. But uh, all that's fixable and, and, it, and it works quite well. It's a little bit interesting to program it's, it's easy to program hmm? okay well, i mean i was messing with it, it seemed pretty yeah. easy um yeah daniel if you want to watch uh i'm gonna be shipping actually tomorrow my pedals out to dave including the hx effects and i picked out um i'll actually tell you guys which pedals i picked out i took a picture of it before i ship before i boxed it and up. then i'm gonna sit here and film it on an iphone <laughs> Or I'm going to try to film it on an iPhone with my hands touching things and stuff, and uh, and and then Mark can edit it. Yep, <laughs> he'll just send it to me in a Dropbox. I'll edit it. Um, so I've got a Morley Wah, a Digitech Drop pedal. A Morley Wah? Yeah. Which one? Little one? Yeah, small one. The small. Maybe. That's actually pretty cool. Actually. Yeah, I like those. Yeah. Um, a. Uh, Peterson Strobo Tuner. The yeah. newer one? Yeah, the pedal. Yeah. Um, a, a Greer Amps Lightspeed Overdrive. Okay. Uh, Buxom Boost. Yeah. And a JHS Muffaletta. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Big so, muffle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to map out the different sounds that I want to get, like, you know, this type of sound, this, and then we'll get a switcher and we'll. Yeah, we'll do, do a switcher with it for sure, yeah. and then you can just have presets and stuff. Yep. Cool. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. So, yeah. so Daniel, check it out as we do that. We're going to be doing yeah. that in the next few weeks or whenever Dave gets to it. Um, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, DSL. We'll, we'll do some videos whether when it's done is the question. <laughs> right. Yeah. No No rush. Um, well, I have, I have a bunch of pedal boards sitting here already that I got to do, so... Yeah, we don't want anybody getting mad. Uh, thanks for the super chat, DSL. Appreciate it. Um, I don't see your question, though. Oh, here it is. Uh, hey, guys, love the show. Dave, what tweaks did you make to the power section of the Gen 2 PT20 from the Gen 1? The newer one seems to be easier on power tubes. Ah. Uh... The early, earliest, earliest Gen 1 had no screen grid resistors. That's all I can think of, really. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe the the resistor we use for the choke, I think, raised in value, so it dropped a little more voltage to the screens. But other than that, no, nothing else. 
So that would actually increase tube life. Yeah. With the way we run those tubes, I'm surprised they work. To be honest. I mean, we run them way past their capacity, but it sounds great that way. So as 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 did um, vintage 20 watt Marshalls. So mm -hmm. it, the, the kind of the, the power section stemmed from that originally. So we kind of kept the, um, the, the building blocks of that and kind of slightly improved tube reliability. But still, to be honest, I mean, you, you should change your power tubes a lot with those amps. I mean, you know, every six months or something. Yeah, the same with the JJ Junior. You think? Yeah, they they just burn the tubes up. Hmm. Okay. They they run really hot. But they sound great that way. So, all right. So, I'll, yeah, I've had it for a while. I mean, so. it's not it's not it's not a big deal. They're they're relatively cheap tubes, so it's not really like a big deal to do that. And you don't need to rebias it. So, no, you just shove them in. Right. It's fine. Uh, stay curious. And, and and here's another thing to remember, guys. And I, this comes up all the time. Just because you put in a new set of tubes does not mean it's a good set of tubes. So occasionally that's this comes up and people put in a new set of tubes. Well, I put in a new set of tubes. It's messed up. Blow a fuse. Well, it doesn't mean it's a good set of tubes. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you got a bad set. Uh see supply chain question below. Uh oh, here we go. Uh, are the supply chain issues improving at all for your parts, or is it still crazy? Improving. Hmm. I don't know if it's improving. It's just it's just a constant state of we're out of everything. I mean, it, it used to be very simple. So you had you had like um, distributors that carried electronic parts, like uh, um like Mauser Electronics, for instance, and they would always have a stock of a large stock of variety of products. And now it's like you go look for them and you're like 12 in stock. 12. <laughs> 12 doesn't work, man. Uh, uh, we got, you know, we have, we have large consumption. Right. So, uh, a lot of the parts we've been trying to get direct from manufacturers mostly and uh, in large quantities. So, um, but it's always, a, it's, it's always a, it's a shit show these days. You know, we're, we're constantly, can you use something else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold on. Let me look. Yes. Maybe. Sure. In order to get amps out the door. Yes. Sure. Absolutely. I heard so. I was watching, on uh facebook some conversation people were having and there was a some hesitancy from some folks about buying products today because it won't sound as good as it's supposed to because people oh are... bullshit bullshit i'm not going to choose anything to sub in that i feel is inferior no it's a that's a bunch of crap good that's why i brought please it up. don't bring that up that's bullshit <laughs> no <laughs> okay i mean uh, and to be honest here's the thing what you, what you realize when you start manufacturing things is like the subtle things you used to think maybe made a difference well in reality you put them on an amp switcher and you switch between say two amps with maybe entirely different tubes or entirely different parts and uh, when you have the amp switcher going, you change the knob settings on whatever the second amp is, you know, that, you know, you have one as your reference and the second amp, you change the knob settings a little bit. And I mean, slightly. And then you realize, wow, I just made it sound exactly the same. So, no. You just maybe have to move the knob slightly different from where you had it uh, slightly so that's my thought okay uh dave i'm wanting one of your four by 12s to go with my be 100 deluxe are they available again love you mark oh thank you man they've always been available they're continually being made 
Um, so um, they're going out. So that's that's what I can say. Okay. VH nineteen eighty four. Cool name. Um, thank you. You guys inspire me. Thanks. Can I run? Oh, by the way, thank you for that too. Can I run a Fry at PS 100, 100 watt to a two by 12, two greenbacks at low volume, or should I replace the PS 100 with a PS 2, 50 watt? It depends. Love the channel. No, the 100. You can use, no, the 100 is great. You can run it low. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, don't need to replace it. And in fact, the 100 watt sounds better, I think. Yeah, you got the newer one. Keep yeah. it. Well, you had both. Yeah. I, I like the 100 better. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, TK, thank you. Opinions on Synergy preamps through a matrix. Would the lack of power tube coloration lessen the vibe of the modules? Also need Lynch, Pilsen, Bone Talk, Tranny, Blown 2, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, weird. Well, it's going to affect the sound of the modules with the matrix. Um, the matrix will not have quite the color of the tube power amp. Um, but I, uh, the power tube coloration, the power tube coloration is like, think of it as like an EQ kind of. You're not pushing it hard enough to saturate it anyway. So it's just really an EQ. So it's just, you might set your settings differently on the matrix with the matrix power amp. Uh, uh, you know, is it better with a tube one? Maybe slightly, but could you get great sounds with the matrix? Absolutely. So I don't, I don't know if I'd worry about, and the matrix weighs like four pounds or five pounds or something like that. So that's great. Okay. I want to make sure I'm, getting to everybody um everybody's questions here just give me one second okay i see it um huh i'm just making sure i didn't miss anybody's question all right let me scroll through I have a good one here that's I found that's not okay. in a super chat. Uh, Jay Busk said, "We're uh, <clears throat> we are all here about Mick Mars Jose amp." Okay, well, um, <laughs> that was recently sold by Richard Fortas, but can you speak of other marshals he used? I really can't speak of anything else he used. Um, I, I don't know what else he has. I think he might have some other Jose's. Uh, I don't think that was the only one he had. Um, and I know Soldano's are in his rig. And uh, other than that, I don't know. Okay. Jim Root. We... There we go. That's a good one for the show, too. Yeah, we've been asked a few times to get Jim Root on. Uh, Christopher Allen. Have you ever had Pete Thorne on? Nah, we don't want him on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing He's, the drink, we're doing the drinking show with Pete Thorne. Yeah, Pete's been on, actually been on the show the Pete, most. Pete, Pete's gonna come back with um a, come back from tour. We're doing the drinking show. Cool. So you have to ask both of us questions and uh, uh, super chats. Uh, we'll have to determine what the value of the super chat is. And if so, then we we drink a shot. Okay, <laughs> sounds painful. Mark is, <laughs> Mark is not involved with this. Yeah, I was going to say it sounds like it would just be I, Pete I, and I. Uh, I'll I'll do a little bit, but I'm I'm going to have to tap out. Uh, Dave, did you have anything to do with B fifty two amps? Thought it said online somewhere. Great show, guys. Keep up the good work. I tweaked some B fifty two designs, and then so did Bruce. Uh, early, really early ones. I tweaked a few of, and then Bruce took over. Bruce Eggdenner, that is. Okay. Harmonicaster. I have a couple of vintage Dynaco Mark IV OT. Should I build an amp around one? I don't know anything. Uh, to be honest, I don't know anything about those OTs. Hmm. So maybe. 
<laughs> okay. I don't see where Saldano ripped off Mesa. No, it's the other way around. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, no, no. Literally, no. Mesa ripped off Soldano. Mesa took the Soldano preamp section, not the power amp section, the, the preamp section from Mike almost verbatim. Yeah, down to like the 39. Like literally almost verbatim. Like, like literally it's hardly any changes on the original. Mesa had many cool amp lines. Mike Sildano had won the SL out. That's true. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. I mean, Mike. Mike's had other amps, though. It's mostly the SL out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, like, really, like he had other amps, but they're all derivative they're all based of on the, the SL out. Okay. Or slightly lower gain versions of things. Yes. This is Soldano did not rip off Mesa. Mesa ripped off Soldano. Yes, there you go. Just on the SLL. Um that's opinion, my opinion, Dave's opinion. I don't want to get sued over it. <laughs> <laughs> uh Danny, recommendations on running delay, reverb and vice versa. Also, same for chorus into flanger or vice versa. Thank you, gents. I wouldn't think you would use a chorus and a flanger at the same time. That would be my thought. Uh, so that wouldn't matter then. And then uh, generally delay is into reverb. Although you can do it the other way. Whatever works for what you like the tone of is fine. Don't get hung up on what absolutely is right. So if you have a total ass backwards setup and it works for you, that's fine. And 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 I totally support that because that's how cool guitar songs are made, you know, like doing something wrong or backwards. Okay. Um Rummy said I missed his super chat, but I actually I did answer it. That was the one with the five band EQ. So I did I did yep. get to that. Um yes, being a lefty does suck sometimes. <laughs> like walking into any guitar store and seeing a gazillion guitars that are right handed, and then you see like the two squires in the back that are lefty and yep. and then you're like, fuck, um, I've got nothing to play here. That's the pain of a lefty. But it's gotten a lot better in recent years that you can buy guitars. So when I first started out, it was really bad. Uh, let's see. Scroll in, scroll in, scroll in. Me too. Daniel Judge. Dave, if you were to buy a Saldano, which would you get? An SLO 30 or SLO 100? Well, he has a Saldano. Yeah. But, but if you were to get a new it's one. It's Mike Landau's vintage Saldano. <laughs> yeah. But if you were to get a new By one, by the way, for the right price, that's for sale too. Really, you would sell that? <laughs> uh, for, I said for the right price, the right so, price. Um, and it's a lot. Um, and it's and, and number thirteen. And I wait. I can. I can. I can maybe. There it is. It's up there, number thirteen in red. What a cool number, too. Number 13 in red. That yeah. is cool. Um, belong to Mike Landau. And uh, I acquired it. So, well, those amps. I, 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 I would consider selling it for the right price. <laughs> well, those amps, the original SLOs in that range without the provenance is probably $5,000. Correct. I will not sell it for that. Right. So it's at least double, I would imagine, that or more. Yeah. Uh, it's a particularly so, good one, I got to say. It's a oh, very okay. early one also. It it doesn't have, uh, it, so it has the, just the bright switch on it. It doesn't have the clean crunch switch on it. Hmm. So. 
Gotcha. So if you had to pick between one now that's made, an SLO 30 or 100, what would you get? Uh, I don't know. It's a good question. Both are really good. Both are great. Yeah, that's all well, 30. Me, I picked the 30. I think the 30 is cool. Yeah. Um, 30. Yep, that was for me. Um, I preferred it. Uh, Adnan Suleiman, thoughts on Voodoo Amp mods for a JP, uh, JMP1. Seems that everyone has had it done back in the day. Is it worth I it? I don't see it. I don't see a point. The JMP1 sounds great. Why, uh, why are you going to pay him to do it? I, I, I don't see. No. JMP1 sounds good stock. Sounds great. Maybe not the clean channel, but the overdrive OD1 is the one I like. Uh, I mean, it sounds great. Sounds sounds really good. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, I don't think I don't think you need to mod it. I, I think it's a waste of money. Mark and Dave, what's your favorite bare knuckle humbucker from Daniel Judge again? Hey man, thank you. Shoot, uh, I I've only tried a few. Um, I got the VH2, and in That's the guitar, cool. the, the guitar that I put it in, I put it in the Cali. It was very bright. It is a bright pickup. Yeah. So I took it out because um, I think I'm going to put it in a different guitar. Um, and then uh, I also put in that Explorer that I have right there. I put in a Rebel Yell. And that sounds great. That's a great pickup. That sounds fantastic. So, so I was going to say the Rebel Yell and the VH2 are great. I think the Mule is great too. So... Um... The the VH two is definitely bright though. It's yeah. definitely uh, very presency on the on the on the spectrum. So you know what I was gonna do what I was gonna put it in. A, you know I've got my black and white stripe Van Halen guitar. I was gonna put it in there because that's an Ash guitar. I was gonna put it in there and put it in put in a two fifty k pot. Oh yeah, that might tone down the the bright yeah the brightness. Yeah. In yeah. fact, that wow, I might do that with mine. Yeah, I bought a 250k pot and I was going to put it in there, check out how it sounded because it's just a bit too bright. I, I hope I hope that Michael Nielsen. So Michael Nielsen it might do a video, uh, or he said he was going to do it, uh, of um, the effects of loading on pickups, meaning meaning the effects of different volume pots. Hmm. And the effects of different tone circuits on the pickups also. So I, I concocted this plan for him to do. And he said, yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> so I guess I got to follow through with that. Um, uh, because I, I think, I think, uh, I think the way we're going to do it is maybe do something readily available. So two pickups. So maybe do a, a JB and a Duncan 59. So that kind of covers your high output and your not high output pickups, you know? And then uh, do the effects of 250K versus 500K on each pickup. And then do the effect of adding a tone circuit to that. And we can do that also with a 250k tone or a 500k tone. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I think that would be the fairest way to do this. And I think that would be the, the most generic kind of pickups you can pick. You know, you got the lower output PAF -E kind of thing and you got the JB right. higher output thing. And I think it would be a very enlightening on, on the, on the sounds. Uh, yeah, that'd be very cool. Very cool to hear. Yeah. Sounds like Michael's got some work out, cut out for him. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I, <laughs> now, especially now that I've put it out there in the public. Right. So now Michael <laughs> has to do it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, sorry, Michael. Simon, what's up, man? Hope you're doing well. Hey, Mark. Hey, Dave. Sorry, I couldn't be watching live today. I'm finishing a mix in the studio, but someone messaged me to say I was floated as a future guest. Wow, I'd be honored, but it depends. <laughs> um, yeah, man, get in touch with me. We'll, we'll absolutely let's do we'll it. Get you booked, Simon. 
Um, fix pedal boards. Thank you for the Tim. super chat. But bam. Hey, hey, Tim, where are my pedal boards? Uh oh. That's all I got to say. Uh oh. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, Peter Urban. Thanks for keeping the sh the show up. Dave, what is technically special about the original train wreck amps? Many pros say the overtones are unreal. Why are those less often reissued by boutique builders? <clears throat> a train wreck uh, original train wreck is amazing. So wh why why it's amazing? I don't that that's a good question. Um I, I don't know if I totally have the answer because I haven't really dissected and gone down this whole train wreck path. But there's a video that P. Thorne did of a, um, a, a train wreck in recent times um, that was a um, the Liverpool EL84 oh. EL84 based uh, um, thing. It sounds freaking incredible. I heard it here in the room. And it just sounds incredible, and it just breaks into harmonic feedback like no tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but I think that has to do with a little bit of the volume it has, and 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 everything. I don't think there's. Again, I haven't had to try to build a clone of it. You know what I mean? So, um, there's little things that he did that that make it sound very dynamic and very touch sensitive and things um but i i, I haven't really super analyzed it so I, i'm not really qualified to answer totally i'd be curious because i've been itching ever since i heard that video uh of getting like a dr z you know z rec right and my experience is that that is not exactly it but i i then again i could be totally wrong with that because again i haven't sat there and i be that right 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 but but the one that was in here was just utterly heavenly oh it sounded incredible, it's incredible Even in the video sound. yeah it was just yeah amazing. i mean like well worth the whatever the amount of money it is for that amp sixty thousand dollars or something because yeah it's that incredible. amp was special it's incredible like yeah. all of us were like sitting there listening to it and going oh <laughs> man yeah that's that insane. sucks <laughs> I mean, mean meaning we can't have it right you can't own that shit yeah unfortunately so you ug has a killer youtube channel i put the link in the chat oh okay uh have not seen them Thanks for letting us know. Uh, more guitars. By the way, we're going to wrap up soon. Um, more guitars. Uh, Dave, love the Dyn IRs. Would it be possible to, for each of the cabs, take a screenshot of your preferred settings within Torpedo Desktop Remote? Mic, CQ settings. All oh, the God, no. No, because it's about your preferred settings. <laughs> uh to be honest it would it would it would be probably um you know a 57 slightly off center of the cone um would it be possible to have presets uh, I, I guess i probably should have done that <laughs> or did we do that um um so uh, you know it's so I would I would use a 57 and a 421 or 57 and a 121. That would be my choices of mics. So um, you know, and generally speaking, the 57 would be the the predominant mic of whatever I used. And so um uh, and how you place it is generally speaking, just slightly off the cone. Um, but it's it's you know. It's it's a straight on, slightly off the cone. Okay. Jim Coleman, Dave, uh, will Synergy be doing updates to the Sin 1 or Sin 2 or adding a Sin 4 to the lineup? Could be. Mm. It depends. Be. Depends. Probably. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh. Steel guitar player. 
Hey, Dave, there are several ProTube amp builders, Tim Marcus, Milkman Amps, Michael Swart of Swart Amps, Mike Marsh, Marsh Amplification. I know Mike. He lives literally like a block down. And that fender right there that you see is from Mike Marsh. Um, Brad Sarno, I'm not, and yeah, Brunetti okay. Amps. I mean, the, the, the one that stands out the most is Milkman. Um, I know Swart, um, Marsh. I know Marsh, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, you know I mean, they're, they're, these are all possible. You know, Mike Marsh? No, I don't know him, but I know oh. of the amps. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, he just, but he doesn't make anything. Um, I mean, I like Mike a lot, but he doesn't make anything original. It's, uh, I mean, he's just building clones of amps, um, for the most part, um, but it's a good suggestion. Uh, thanks. Yeah, we'll definitely mark it down. Um, do you know Tim Marcus, Dave? Uh, no, but I know of the the company. Yeah. Well, if anybody knows any of these people besides Mike Marsh, because I know him, um, send them our way. Uh, let's see. Bruno, thanks for the super chat. I'm going to look for your question. If you asked anything, I don't see it. Uh, Mark is looking tired. <laughs> yeah, I've been up since like seven this morning. It's been a long day. Um, that's okay. Friday night shows are tough for me. I've been up since 6.30. Yeah, but it's it's three hours behind, dude. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, um, it's late, uh, but I don't want to miss anybody's super chat, so I'm just scrolling here just to make sure. Uh, here's Bruno, Dave. What transformers do you recommend for my Plexi project with new old stock Mullard mustard caps? Uh, hey, more. Oh, hey, more. Hey, more transformers. Yep. Okay, absolutely best best around. Uh, now, how are you going to get them, or how fast you're going to get them? That's a different story. Mm. Yeah. Um, hey, Dave, were Grover Jackson era Friedman guitars razor blade relic or frozen? I have a vintage S, and the paint looks naturally aged. Great job. Do you know? They're not completely razor blade relic. Um, 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 some of them are 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 frozen. Um, but yes, he did the, the, the guy that did the relicing form does amazing job. So absolutely. Yeah. A little of both. The, uh, the checking on my Cali is amazing. Yep. Yeah. It's so good. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Michael Nielsen says, yep. Going to do it. I bought the 59 and the JB already. Oh yeah, we got trouble going on. So we now we gotta we gotta we gotta devise a pick guard, Michael. So um that we can do all the wiring on and do the switching between. Hmm. It's gonna look really ugly, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it. <laughs> it might have four pot it might have it literally might have four pots on it. Just to switch between well, I, I it's like literally just to show the differences of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're just going to carve something up and pop it in the guitar. Awesome. That'd Actually, I, I really want, I want to hear the video myself. Yeah, I'm curious. What because the I've never heard this video comparison, and I think it's a great video comparison. So I think it will, you know, really show a bunch of sh stuff you know that everything in the chain matters because everything in the chain matters and and like how okay just with a humbucker and and the two kinds of humbuckers how the 250k versus the 500k matters with each heat of each humbucker mm -hmm. 
my thought is you're going to like the 500k better on the um jb and my thought is you're going to like the 250k better on the 59 so that's my preconceived thought but it could be different and then as far as the tone knob effects, that's a whole different thing. Right. So, I mean, so uh, on a lot of guitars, <clears throat> like a Gibson guitar would be 500K tone knob, right? With um, with the with the cap and all that. It doesn't matter what the cap is. That That's not the effect we're reaching. But um, the, the 500K isolates the tone knob more from the volume pot meaning when it's all the way out it's um more isolated than a 250k would be meaning like the the 250k in there would bleed more top end would would bleed more high end to ground so theoretically a one mag pot would be even less effect or there's also what's called no load tone pots, meaning when you're all the way up, it literally disconnects it. Hmm. So um, all of this makes a difference, like in a guitar. So if a tone knob is attached, it makes a difference in the top end content. The value of the pot makes a difference in the top end content. But it's more than just the top end content. It changes the whole frequency spectrum of it. So uh, it, it'll be it'll be a cool video. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for doing it, Michael. Um, all right, so we got en Enrico here. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Can KT seventy sevens work in a small box fifty? And if so, what's the bias range? Yes, um, I don't know, thirty to forty milliamps, depending on what you like the sound of. Any of it will work. Okay, we got Jason with a super chat, which is this one. Dave, thanks for getting my BE50 back up and running in late August, early September. I really appreciate the dedication to your products. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, oh, and here's Jason again. Oh, same, same, same thing. thing. Oh. Thank you twice. You paid twice. Thank you, Jason. We appreciate it, man. I uh, hope you enjoy, enjoy your small box uh oh we just got one yeah just got another oh, one no question though just a small thank you oh thanks man thank, thank you, you very so much, much. Tony. we really appreciate it um so i want to mention uh no more super chats by the way because we're gonna we're That's gonna about it we're done yeah we're gonna call we're gonna call it quits i gotta go have dinner <laughs> yeah um so dave navarro has rescheduled he was supposed to be tonight um, I forgot to mention that at the beginning, but I did make an announcement earlier on Facebook and stuff. Dave Navarro will be with us uh, April 8th um, at 9 o'clock Eastern time. So uh, he's just really busy right now. He's got two bands, an art show going on, and he asked if we can reschedule. So I said, not a problem at all. So, so he will be with us. Um, and then... Like I said, make sure you guys check out the previous video, hit subscribe, and answer the question to enter to win the guitar, the Kramer SM1. Uh, check out Sweetwater, please. Check out our link below to purchase from Sweetwater. And, uh, you know, we get a, uh, a little commission for every, everything that you buy there, but it uh, doesn't increase your price at all. Um, but they're a great sponsor and a great place. Make sure you get your all your gear, you know, all your stuff from Sweetwater. Uh, did I miss anything, Dave? No. All right. All right. Uh, if you guys want to buy the guitars from Dave, make sure you email him. And, uh, I know Michael was interested in your EVH. Yeah, I think it's done. Oh, cool. Awesome. Um, so, all right, guys, have a great weekend and, uh, enjoy the Super Bowl if you're going to watch that. And, uh, I say go LA. That's, that's my, my pick. You have I, have to, I have to say, I have to say, I didn't even know who was playing the Super, <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> so uh, there you go. LA, well, great. L LA, yeah, you go. Yeah. All right, everybody. Have a great one. We All right. See care. you guys later. Bye. Bye. -bye.